Jeff Howard here at Kiteboarding.com and we want to address one of the main questions that we get and that is a waist harness or a seat harness? How to choose and which one is better for you? Now as a customer comes in and asks us which harness do I need? I always say that it's kind of up to you and the style of riding you like. Now I'll tell you a lot of the younger guys do pick up a waist harness. Waist harnesses are nice. Me personally, I do ride kind of like a hybrid type seat harness or a seat type harness for the lower hook point. I like to have a little bit more back support as I feel that when I put on a waist harness and I'm riding loaded, it actually puts the load right through my lower back. And that's one of the issues that I don't like um, and, and it's, a, it's kind of a personal deal. So that's the most important part. It's kind of like wearing a pair of shoes. When you start to wear those pair of shoes and you get comfortable with them, you will know which one is the best. Now, to kind of help you make a decision on which one you need, Look at the factor of how, how you like to ride. A lot of the surf type kind of guys and the freestyle type guys and the biggest, larger one is a waist type harness. Um, it, it, is, it is really nice. You have to also determine if you like that harness to move around your body. So a lot of the surfers, it gives you a little bit more freedom when you're in your waist. You're not being lower restricted on your lower legs. So riding blind, um, landing blind, or doing some of those moves as well as in the surf, so you can actually twist your body around a lot more, they get into the waist harness. Now choosing the type of waist harness is, again, depends on how you want it to move. Some guys pick them with a lot more neoprene or the molded type. The molded type are going to keep that, that harness situated more on your body to, to help you, uh, to keep it from turning and twisting around you, keep it from riding up. I'm very slender, and when I wear a waist harness, i got to make sure that I have one that has a good molded internally so it keeps that harness from riding up on me because it will end up in my armpits. Now once that harness, when you're learning, waist harnesses sometimes can be a little hard to deal with because a lot of the time you spend is with a kite over your head. So this harness is constantly going to be wanting to be pulled up and it will ride up under your armpits. Now once that happens, your hook point will, will raise up and now your motion of power and depower through the kite or reaching out to grab that sheeting system is going to be a lot further away from you. So the lower hook point you have, the more bar motion you have and the more you can reach up. So think about that as well. My personal type riding, I do like freestyle. I love to jump in the air. I don't do all the handle pass type stuff. I love a race board uh, or going sailing, riding across the bay and stuff. So I ride more of a seat harness to give me a lower hook point and more advantage against that kite. Now some of the younger guys will get out there and they're wondering how I can hold so much load. That is with that lower hook point. So which one's better? You will determine that as you get out and ride. A big thing is, is do it in your lessons. In a lesson, they will usually get you fitted with a couple different harnesses. If it's a really good school, they'll have a range of harnesses. Feel free to ask that instructor to try those different harnesses out because, again, there's two things I don't skimp on in the sport that I tell everybody comes in. Don't skimp on your harness. It holds all your load and it will affect how you ride and hours on the water to learning. It can be very irritating if you get a cheap type harness. or it also determines the other one is the bar that I tell people. Don't skimp on that. But harness is the number one. Try them on. Go into a shop. Now, to determine which one is your size, now that makes another big factor. If you, like me, I personally, if I'm riding a waist harness, I usually ride a smaller, narrower bar, which you can pick up usually a lot of extra. A lot of the harnesses are starting to come with just one standard bar, and it doesn't allow some adjustability. But we do have the 6-inch bars, 10-inch bars, and 12-inch bar. But why I'm saying that is I usually size up the harness. So if I'm wearing a medium in a, in a seat type harness, I usually go up to a medium or a large, depending on the brand, in a waist harness. And the reason is, is because they size up and they get bigger. They give me more back protection. They also give me more surface area, which keeps that harness from riding up on me. So I'll scale down my bar, scale up in my harness size, and that gives me more surface area. Now, if I want to get out there in freestyle and I want the harness to move, go the opposite direction. Go down and get that to the, the smallest harness that will fit around you, give you good bar protection, but also that frees up that harness to move around you. And you can tell this one gives me really good coverage. This is one of the top harnesses out there, the Pyro, which is, is bar none. It's like the, the, the top one if I had to sell somebody. I love selling a Pyro if they get into the waist. It is the Cadillac of harnesses and the kind backs it, so I, I really love that side of it. Uh, when it comes into a seat harness, you can't beat the Fusion. Now the Fusion is the only one truly in the industry in a seat harness that has full-on support uh, all the way around the lower half of the harness. It's not just a modified waist harness, it's a truly built 
uh, seat harness that gives you really good support in the lower back. It has a lot of surface area. It still has your leash hook on the back. It's just a wonderful type harness, neoprene. They didn't skimp on this harness. It is the top number one seat type harness out there in the industry. I've yet to see better. Um, but there's a lot of really good ones. Look for a bar pad. Bar pads don't skimp. A lot of guys say, ah, I don't need the bar pad, that's an extra 20 bucks. That $20 down the line is a big advantage. So add that bar pad, it'll follow that bar up, kind of just fits it all out and makes it real smooth. So that's Jeff Howard here at KiteBoarding.com and my goal is to educate you and get you the right product that fits you, the rider. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or look for some other videos we got. Jeff Howard here at KiteBoarding.com.